abortion clinics from opening out there. That Susan? That's true. And I can welcome you to Cleveland because this is where I grew up. But Joe, it's <laughs> Thank awfully you, nice to be here. And you are right. Right. Lakewood has no abortion clinics, but that may change. The city is getting ready to tackle the controversial and emotional issue of abortion. The Cleveland area now has only four abortion clinics. This one is near University Circle. But because some women's rights groups were considering a legal challenge of the strict Lakewood laws governing the clinics, the city council decided to try to avoid that and make some changes itself first. But the new regulations may be just as open to challenge. One proposal would require a husband's approval for his wife to be sterilized. The U.S. Supreme Court has struck that down. All the proposals are going to be presented tonight to the Lakewood Council. I'll be there, and I'll tell you exactly what happened tonight at 11. Look forward to it. Okay, thanks, Susan. Our Trouble Cylinder 8 reporter, Tim Taylor, has been trying to get the powers that be to help a softball player get a grip, a good grip, on his teeth. And to explain that, well, Tim's got his work cut out for him. Tim? Well, Judd, you know, even the very best shortstops can be fooled by a hot grounder when they take a bad hop. But as Mark Grattan showed me today, that ball did a lot more than give an opposing player a cheap single. The ball knocked out Mark's expensive permanent bridge work. Mark says at first the Cleveland Baseball Federation said their insurance would take care of it, but later decided their insurance did not cover such dental injuries. The contract uh, had a clause which said that therapeutic devices such as braces that were destroyed would not be replaced and in actuality this one was not braces that were on my teeth but they were my teeth in permanently permanently affixed in your mouth this is right but thanks to TV8 and Tim Taylor I got immediate action which I don't think I would have gotten under normal circumstances and our thanks to the Cleveland Baseball Federation's medical board for their delicate handling of Mark's case. After agreeing to review the case once more, they again decided they were not legally responsible, but from a moral standpoint, thought it would be in Mark's best interest to resolve the issue in as much as he does not have personal insurance to cover that work. Now, incidentally, you may have noticed the patch over Mark's right eye. He injured it playing basketball this morning, and no, he's not superstitious yet. He'll be back at his shortstop position with his new teeth next spring. Judd? <laughs> okay, thanks, Tim. I haven't been here all that long, but from my window in the newsroom, I can look out across Lake Erie and see fishermen on the inner breakwater near East 55th. They catch a lot of sheep's head out there, and for the most part, the fishermen throw them back. Sheep's head tastes pretty bad. But there's a research group down at Ohio State that's come up with a way to use sheep's head. And the fish just might find its way to your dinner table as a highly processed food snack. Researchers say it's really a tasty product, and they hope they can sell a lot of it. Well, it's tough to get to Rattlesnake Island, but our Ohio reporter Neil Zerker managed not only to get there, but he came back with quite a story. Larry Wilson, one quarter of the entire permanent population of Rattlesnake Island in Lake Erie. The other three residents are Larry's wife, Judy, their daughter, Melissa, and infant son, Joey. Larry says he was thinking of becoming a motel manager when he answered an ad two years ago for a resort manager. It turned out to be the job of caretaker of privately owned Rattlesnake Island, accessible only by boat or airplane. The island is about a mile long and has three lodges and the caretaker's home. It has one road that Larry fondly refers to as Rattlesnake Island, U.S. Highway 1. Now, many people only dream of living alone in an island. Larry and Judy Wilson have found it can be both good and bad. I think probably the only minus about being out here is there's a lot of frustrating things. <laughs> when things break down and you don't have the parts to fix it, then, oh, it really gets frustrating. At the same time, you have a tendency to become very philosophical about life and what it's all about. One problem that the Wilsons must continually deal with is what to do when you need something from the corner store and the wind is blowing, since the corner store is five miles away over water on the mainland. Neil Zerker, New Center 8 on Rattlesnake Island. And I'll just bet that the vibrations from the Browns' defense yesterday <laughs> was felt all the way to... Rattlesnake Island. You can believe that. It was certainly felt in uh, Cincinnati, and they say you never can get enough of a good thing, Judd, so we'll be back to take another look at yesterday's big victory right after this.
big win over the Bengals yesterday, and it was such a sweet victory that we're going to take another look at it. The Browns' defense was superb, and there were some offensive standouts as well, like Dave Logan, who grabbed four passes, including this 42-yarder that originated at the Browns' three-yard line. Bengal coach Bill Johnson called it the key play. Seven plays later, Don Cockroft booted a 41-yard field goal to give the Browns a 3-0 first-quarter lead. In the second period, Earl Edwards, who really asserted himself, recovered this Archie Griffin fumble to hand the Bengals, or rather the Browns, the ball at the Bengal 13. Following drive stopped short of the goal line, but Cockroft was perfect again from 25 yards out, making it 6-0 Cleveland. Later in the quarter, Sipe engineered a scoring drive. Again, Logan, a key target. Brian was on the mark 15 out of 21 times for 198 yards in the contest. The game's only touchdown came a few plays later. And it was on this 12-yard foot race to the corner, which Larry Poole won. And with the kick, the Browns had a 13-0 lead at the half. Appropriately enough, the Browns' defense sewed up the victory on this fourth down play at the Bengal 12. Rookie Mickey Sims tips a Kenny Anderson pass, which Joe Jones intercepts, icing a victory, mighty important one, 13-3. The Browns will play their first home game a week from tonight here at the stadium against the New England Patriots. And before you start wondering if there will be a big letdown after that emotional victory yesterday, Forrest Gregg wants to put your mind at ease. I don't think we'll have any problem getting our people up for uh, another ball game because this is a Monday night game. and. So national television, this is the first time the Cleveland Browns have played on national television for several years, and this is something that uh, the football players have wanted. Uh, because besides uh, being a job and being a business and getting paid, recognition is, is part of this business. They want to be recognized as good football players, and they know that the only way they'll get that recognition is to be seen nationally. The first NFL weekend concludes tonight with the Steelers hosting the San Francisco 49ers. Pittsburgh is heavily favored, but we all found out yesterday they, anything can happen. The Indians are in Detroit tonight to open a two-game stand against the Tigers, but the really big games in the American League East will take place in Boston and Baltimore. The Yankees leading by four and a half over the third-place Red Sox play in Beantown, while the Orioles, who are three and a half back in second place, host the Blue Jays of Toronto. Unless it's underwater tonight, Fenny Stadium will be the site of a showdown between this Cleveland State soccer team and the sixth ranked squad from the University of St. Louis. You can bet the Vikings will be up for this one. Well this has always been a situation uh, um, you know I, my own remark about that is may it ever be like that you know because uh, if you can't gain somewhat of a reputation and a measure of fame by beating St. Louis University then we you know we won't be in the position we have been and uh, uh, yes most teams definitely get up for St. Louis U. The Cavaliers will open their full training camp tomorrow out of the Coliseum. Bill Fitch will welcome the veterans as well as those who survived last week's rookie camp. And Judd, I'm sure the Browns would like to uh, say that uh, welcome to town and the big victory yesterday helped make it a good one. Football it sure did. I watched the whole game. Heck of a game. Dick, you got a lot of new things to show us in the weather tonight. We have color radar and Detroit wishes they had a radar altogether. It was hit by lightning and destroyed today. We'll see color radar and more after this.